Yes, this is uh, everybody. Uh, this is the IPFS implementers call for May 12th. Uh, I'm going to start off with some agenda items. Brendan. Yeah, uh, so I, the, I just wanted to announce this is a very like quickly put together um, workshop happening next Friday uh, around uh, exploring the need for IPFS implementations. Um, we've been talking to Juan about it. He really wants to see this happen. And so a number of us are going to just explore the, the concept around it. And so I wanted to join this call to invite a few of you in particular to speak. Um, and if anybody thinks they have something specific to say around the topic, it'd be great. Um, I think so far I've just been organizing uh, who is speaking and running agendas. So if you want to do any of that, chat to me. Uh, you can talk for any amount of time, five minutes to 45 minutes, I think is sort of the range that we're targeting. Um, uh, yeah. And so if you have things to say about IPFS implementations, potential opportunities, potential pain points, things you wish exist, things you think could be great if we all work together in a specific way on a specific thing, if you want to talk about specs and why specs are a great thing for lots of implementations, if you want to talk about interop testing, why interop testing is a really important thing and hard to do right, hit me up. Let's, let's get you on the schedule. Sound good? That's my agenda item. If you have oh, anybody have any oh, questions on that? Yeah, just come we go to say hi and look into it. Um, I will just. Uh, I guess I will drop a link into chat. Um, but why don't you add me on the IPFS Discord if, um, and then maybe we can use the IPFS operators channel because that's a known mutual public space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it at B five? On yes, the Discord. I'm B five on Discord. Yeah. Somebody okay. mentioned they had a question. Yeah. Yeah, it was just me. Like, and so during this workshop, we will go into deeper things than we'll usually get into for an hour. That happens with this biweekly call. I think yeah, it's specialized topics. Like, if folks have specific things they want to talk about in around, um, it's we're trying to set okay. aside four hours to get some good recordings. <clears throat> so this will be online. It's not, yeah. obviously not an in person thing. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll try and do a little coordination of like who's speaking on what so that we can make sure we get a nice broad swath of why lots of invitations might be a great idea and, and certain deep dives on parts of that. Um, so yeah. Awesome. That's all I have. Uh, maybe I, I should maybe I'll quickly jump in here just to let folks know that like IPFS is cam IPFS camp is happening. Uh, I know they're active on working on the website. This is going to be in Amsterdam, July 14th through 17th, I believe. Um, some more like public comms will be happening. I assume I know the like uh, event marketing side is heavily engaged in terms of having secured venues, etc. Um, it sounds like last week or this, uh, folks like. Juan and Molly and Mosh were getting involved from a like starting to set up some program structure. Obviously, I'm sure they're going to be coming to a lot of folks in this call for help in that. But uh, just want people to know like it is happening. There is momentum building behind it, and hopefully that will become public here quite quite soon. And expect more to come in terms of what that what that looks like. And this is you know uh, some of us got to talk with Juan on Monday. You know, and as he was emphasizing, this will be different than the IPFS camp from a few years ago. A few years ago was a little bit more. It sounds like more workshoppy. Uh, this is uh, more about like creating a, a gathering space for you know, the, providing the connection point for different people to be able to go deeper into various tracks of, of conversation and design, etc. So it's at least for a lot of people in this room, it's not going to be as heavy on you know e educating and like doing workshops for people, but more creating you know good spaces and conversations um, for how we take IPFS forward. But more on that to come. Um, but it is happening. Um, all right, there, as many of you may be aware, there is a bit swap 1.3 spec it's up there for a little while. Um, and there's a few points that seem like a little contentious. I'm wondering if, especially for those who have reviewed it, if we're like at a stage or we feel like, yeah, we've resolved most of the, we've resolved most of the things and probably we can just let people start implementing and we'll see whoever implements like first if they run into any bugs then we can review or like any any like big annoyances in implementing then we can come back and review if we need to make any changes 
if that sounds like a reasonable plan for people. Um, what's the, I, I think the last point of contention that was there for me was the format. Um, like what's the, there were a lot of comments. So what's the like latest thinking of like, like kind of like where you, you landed on there? So there, so there's, there's two, basically there, there's two like schools of thought around how we want to like label the tokens. Either it's just the tokens are bytes or it's the tokens are prefixed with a magic number in the code table. Um, and, and then you put whatever your bytes are afterwards. I, I think I'm kind of with, with Steven here that having like the magic number in front makes it easier to like glue different, uh, different token systems together without having to worry about how to disambiguate um, or like accidental collision kinds of things. Uh, yeah. if people have, if people have big problems with that, like I'm, I'm open to, to revisiting, but like, I don't know, I guess the, the multi-formats project is largely for the low cost of a few bytes, you know, what your data is. And this feels like a reasonable place for that. I don't know. That's kind of my take, but I am, I am just me. I think the only argument that I'd have against this is it's it it could be it could have add, add up very quickly um if you send more than one token and you have to prefix every token uh, not like i guess right and so if i if i have to use multiple tokens and it's just like i'm worried about the overhead like my token is my just this token but let's say my token is 64-bit number and I'll have to put another 64 bit number in front of my token. I've doubled my token size just to disintegrate it. That would be, that seems very unfortunate. Um, well, it's probably like a couple of, a couple of bytes because um, if you use the same token repeatedly, then it gets like cached and like the header, there's like a, like instead of putting the tokens repeatedly, we have like a place where we put all the tokens and then we have like indices to point to them. We make a bucket byte token ID of each token. Basically. So okay. what happens is instead, like if you have, because like the, the, the costly part, if you have many, many tokens is likely going to be the token value, not the token type, which is like a couple of bytes. Um, so that's yeah. the thing that we're, we're caching. I think there was like a good point raised there by, by Ian of like, this feels terrible. Couldn't we just have gzip the whole thing? But I don't think we want to put gzip in the protocol. Um, no, we should push, push. I mean, this is the argument where I think we should push push hard for the P2P compressed transports, right? And then we can just stop worrying about this. Yeah, cool yeah, that would be that would be like real slow. Um, there's a couple other like, I guess, related small things. So one is, I think I'm inclined to, uh, you know, help out the Pyrgos folks who started on this earlier and just skip a few token, skip a few proto buff identifiers so that we don't conflict with anything they already have. It's not strictly required because you can, we're bumping the protocol ID and they could figure it out, but like if it makes their life easier and all it means is that our like proto buff looks a little uglier because we skipped from three to six or something, like who cares? Um, Nobody cares. So that's, that's kind of my impression is like, let's just do that. Um, yeah, let's, let's be nice to people who, who use this stuff. I agree, yeah. I agree. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it also like honors earlier work, right? Like mm -hmm. the note in the docs that say, hey, this starts at six because somebody because. kicked us off first. That's kind of. I solid. agree, I absolutely. Cool. Um, all right, so this, this seems good then. We can start playing around with it. One area where I, I suspect like we may want to change things slightly, although I guess this could be 1.4 if we want is I kind of want to add an area where you can say, send with your, your want a, I want, I want this block assuming that it's this big. Otherwise tell me it's like too big or something. Um, basically like allow me to like control the size of the response if I know how big the block is, if I have an idea of how big the block is supposed to be. Um, there's sort of like, I have some reasoning behind that that I'll write up when when I can I can get to it. We can talk about it more, but I don't want to eat up all the time here. Um, so if we have like extra time at the end, we can talk about that. But that's the only thing I can see 
maybe wanting to change, but it could also just be another protocol bump later. So, the the one other, the only other thought when you mentioned this is that I was wondering about is that is token, and this is probably a larger discussion. I'm happy to defer this, but I do want to mention at least is token the right abstraction, or do we actually just want to add a general metadata field, which is much more like here could be various things especially if we already prefix it with a magic number it could be prefix magic number your authentication token um but now this is more explicitly like arbitrary metadata that higher level protocols can use um i was thinking of these things I, i'm not sure how different concern. i think maybe maybe for you to talk maybe this is the like already it does all the captured in the current intention and i've just misunderstood it yeah, we should look into it a little bit. I think that it it um, can act as sort of arbitrary metadata if you'd like it to. Yeah. Okay. Um, but oh yeah, Russell's point. It's arbitrary until until people start relying on it. That's true. But to some extent, like this is this is sort of the point. Like we're not going to settle on like a single authentication mechanism. We're going to let people, you know, do what they want, or if they want to send extra metadata things will sort of do what they want and we'll get kind of like looser convergence that way as yeah. opposed to mandating it at like the protocol level so that way like doing normal easy bit swap things is easy and then when you want to do like fancy bit swap things then you have to add in like oh yeah which of these tokens do i have support for maybe we run into problems later where we want to have ways to like have something like identify where i can ask you like which of these like extensiony things do you support um but we can maybe cross that road when we when we get there if people start wanting it then we'll add we can add a, a separate side a separate way of asking in bitswap like what do you what extensions do you support, you support? Yeah. yeah let's start putting links in there cool. it's my, my secret um, time i guess well, it's gonna be useful. Well, while we're on while we're on specs i guess two other things uh so the reframe, I don't know if this was done last time, but the reframe spec is merged, um, which basically is just defining, it's a protocol that will help us with some like request response, like building request response protocols um, or having request, request response methods. Mostly we're gonna, we're starting off using it for uh, like content routing types of requests. Like, how do I have an API that sort of abstracts out a lot of the things that DHT does for you so that we can make it easy to plug in, like, you can use a DHT or use the indexer network or use whatever else you want by just having, like, here is an API that lets you do this. Um, there's, a, there's a PR to that now to add support for peer records as opposed to just, like, provider records and IPNS records. Um, and once we have that, you should be able to build a gateway that has like the content routing system live out here and just uses this this protocol to communicate between them um, and then that thing could include all of your grossness in there you could be like oh i'll check the dht and i'll check the indexers and i'll check the BitTorrent dht and i'll check you know a bunch of other random places and i will collect that data and send it back to you um, which which could be which could be very nice Uh, oh, and and of course, there have been some issues have been raised in the repo that some friendly folks trying to clean things up, and I think uh, we should do what we committed to last time, which is uh, remove all of the old cruft and 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 start again with uh, things that are actual specs for things we actually want people to implement. Yeah, uh, speaking of actual specs, just a brief minute. I've, I've been working through Unix FS recently. Um, the spec is. Don't read the spec. It's not correct. It does not tell you what is actually happening. Uh, I did one in IP plus specs. Um, I, I started a document to collect all the knowledge from people of like how does a Unix FS actually work, uh, which I'll post at some point. Um, it, it is not a spec. I don't think there's. it makes a lot of sense to write a spec actually for this because there's like, well, it happens that Go IPFS does this thing X and we just need to support it. It's like, okay. I don't know if you want to call this a spec, but it should be documented. It's just what I'm trying to do with this document. Um, 
which hopefully makes make it will make it easier for other folks in the future. Yeah. And also be a good reason why we want to deprecate it eventually. Yeah, I think having that would be be really nice. It will also we'll have a it'll let us have a bit of some space to ask some folks like like you know Reba or Rod or um, I, I think Iraqli put up some some things trying to clean up a little bit about how UnixFS works. Uh, and like kind of get us all on the same page is like with all of its with all of its warts and backwards compatibility things, this is actually UnixFS. Um, so is that a document dig that will live in the specs repo? Like at least documenting what I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure convinced it should it, because I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Like the nature of it is like it's not gonna be spec in a sense like you must do X or like it's more of a description of this is what unix fs does in the wild and if you want to support it this is the things you have to care about and understand and so i'm, I'm fine with it living the specs repo we, i'm also fine like having it some other place right now i'm it's it's a notion um where i'm just collecting information right now i would still think like it can be a spec we have example of specs that was not not our but like in the technology space it's happened often that we have a spec that is created after the fact, after implementation done, and they still call that a spec. So I don't see why it wouldn't be a spec. That's fair. Yeah. Well, I guess a descriving spec, right? You're not, yeah. not describing spec. people yeah. what, what you should big... happen. You're saying what is happening. Yeah, you put a big disclaimer saying like nobody foot through this. It's just by history that happened, and like we don't know how it is anymore. But mm -hmm. that's how it works now. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 true. Yeah, and you do need bug for bug oh. compatibility with UnixFS. Otherwise, you don't get the right hashes. Like, and that's important if yes. you want to implement an ad. Yep. Which maybe people should not do, but that's a different story. Different story, right? <laughs> <laughs> Start with the document and then decide whether or not you want to I use that document. For, for now, I'll just comment on like, what is it? What is it? Uh, mm -hmm. so, so there's the there's the parallel like UnixFS 1.5 spec that's out there uh which I, I know has been getting some some traction like i, I assume that that, that 1.5 version it, it, that's talking about adding some new functionality it's not actually trying to fill in the holes of the things that aren't actually specified that should be uh, yeah i'm not sure what that is i think the it's if you look in like the specs under like unix under unix fs there's like a bunch of stuff with metadata um with like optional fields like mode and m time which does not exist um well they, i mean they, they they exist they exist in some implementations and not others right uh right now if i, I it exists in jsipfs it exists in go unix fs node there's a pr for it in go unix fs okay um but there, there's a spec for it that says how it is that it's supposed to work Okay, never I, mind. Sorry. And I think the that part I think is specified, but I, I would agree, Steve. I think while well, the metadata, while well, the new stuff was specified, so people know how to add the new thing in, the old stuff was was not fully specified. So you still sort of have to be like, if I have the oral tradition of how to do the old stuff, this is how I add the new thing onto it. Right. Um, and so we should clean up the old thing so that it's it's easier. For, uh, for folks to work with. That'll link to the doc. And, yeah. And, you know, it's... Um, yeah, let's see. Are there any things people wanna mention about uh, stuff they've been working on recently? Um, I guess I can just, mention uh, there's a recent release of IPFS desktop uh, 0.20.6 that's got a new app ready metric so we can start measuring startup time so we can improve that. Um, so if you're running IPFS desktop and um, you get an update notification, please update. And if you have not given consent to uh, provide us those metrics, please do so. Um, it is anonymous, so thanks. I got a, a quick announcement that we are renaming GoIPFS. 
What's the new uh, name? How uh, TBD. So uh, G I P F S. Oh, G I P F S. Banana. I I will post the link. It's in description right now. Yeah. Uh, if you got a suggestion, post a suggestion. Uh, it will happen after we uh, ship uh, 0.13 and before we ship 0.14. So um, suggestions welcome. Ground it, rules it should not have the name 1.0 when you rename it. Uh, some some example names. Uh, the first name proposed uh, in the newest issue was to rename Go IPFS to GoLang IPFS. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> um, so ideally, I think we're looking for something a little more uh, distinguishing than that. <laughs> OG IPFS. Okay, do it. S submit it. <laughs> Can I? Can I just get some context around like the the motivation for the rename? Uh, the issue is like I keep interacting with people. I say I because I'm a devil, but a lot of we a lot of people think that, and they have this mindset where like it doesn't work in Go IPFS. It doesn't exist about IPFS, and we want to stop having people thinking that IPFS is Go IPFS, like. IPFS is a protocol and Go IPFS is an implementation. And if we rename Go IPFS to Banana IPFS, hopefully it will be more clear. I'm not sure about Banana IPFS, but uh, well, the point is like there are other implementation. Like you can import all the packages and make IPFS yourself, like IPFS Lite, though. You can, if you want to use IPFS with Filecoin, you can use Estuary, which is, I don't know. It uses it share most of the code with Go IPFS, but still, it's another implementation. Uh, we have what people working on here are doing, and we would like to have more recognition for the other alternatives because, like, if we don't do that, what people think should happen is like everything should be in Go IPFS, and Go IPFS should be these master binaries, at least two gigabyte big, and support every feature in the world, which we don't want to happen. Yeah, I think there's going to be a, a few things around we'll, both like namings and specifications that will will need to happen to kind of like decouple a lot of things that live together. So like some examples of things that I have heard people consider as IPFS is the IPFS.io gateway, um, Go IPFS, uh, the IPFS public DHT. So if you run Go IPFS, but it's like on your land, then it's like not IPFS anymore somehow, or which is like super not the point. Uh, in like many ways, right? Um, like there's, so there's like a, a lot of those sorts of layers of like things people have, have conflated as, as IPFS that um, it's hard to blame them when they all have the word IPFS in the name, right? So, uh, but now it's worth like making some adjustments to, to, what, to all of that. Like as it is right now, I can already think of like, you know, five or so IPFS implementations that are, you know, in use or being developed that people are doing, but like still that's not what people are thinking of, even though this is, this is the case already and has been for like a while. Final point, yeah. IPFS is about content addressing. It's not about the DHT or Go IPFS. It's about content addressing and IPLD mainly. Um, and there, I suppose we could support other things on IPLD, but we don't really right now. So, what's IPLD? Sorry. What is IPLD? <laughs> so there are some good questions around around like this as well. And I think I believe you are going to talk about your torn thing now. <laughs> a little. Well, so libp 2 p and IPLD, right, are are a little different in that because they are able to exist as just libraries. Um, instead of as applications, right? They have like a little more, they have like a little more room to maneuver in this like, what are you, right? Like it becomes a little more clear that like, oh, libp 2 p doesn't mean I have to do literally all of, like I don't have to have quick and TCP and Mplex and Yamux and, so, you know, and noise and TLS. And I still have to support the ancient SecIO thing nobody's using anymore, right? Like people have some awareness that that's not required, right? Um, and same with IPLD, you don't have to support every codec that seems like imply, you don't have to support all the features because 
you know, specs and ADLs didn't used to exist and they were, it was still IPLD then, right? Um, that's, I think, a little easier for people to work with than like IPFS because people are able to like run an application that does the IPFS things and that, that adds like confusion layers. However, I do think that some of these questions and yeah, I guess as, as Drew Fo said, uh, some of the stuff with the, the WebAssembly and IPLD things I'm interested in um, will lead to some of that. Uh, I tried to make a codec recently that expresses, that, that fits to the IPLD data model, um, which I suspect will add to, will give a little bit of like, uh, have a little bit of friction and result in some conversation with, the, with people interested in IPLD because what is the data model seems to still be like a little bit in debate. Uh, how happy are people with non UTF-8 things as map keys? I don't know, we'll find out. It's supported in the data model or is it? And so like these are pieces that like we'll want to, we'll get to like flesh out as part of that work. Um, there is no data model. Also perhaps a valid, a valid statement. And so like these are pieces I think we can like, we should be looking into uh, for how we want how we want to describe and interact with that. I think I think the important part that's actually like in my sense there that what's much more important is to figure out the relationship of like how much IPLD is required for you to be called IPFS because um, I'm, I, I lean on the like very little uh, side of things, but like because I think that's important because if if, if that relationship is very, very simple and like there's not a lot of binding, then we are much freer to A, have disagreements about what IPLD is and also experiment like whether it's the right thing to do in IPLD. And these can all be implemented in IPFS implementations, but nobody's like, oh, you're not implementing the right subset of IPLD, so you're not allowed to call yourself IPFS, right? And so I think that's, I think, where it would be really useful to have a clear, clear explanation of, of and, and like a sense that we can tell people. Yeah, I will, I'll share more with uh, folks here if anyone wants to, is interested. Uh, I'm trying to write up some docs that are trying to like take a stab at how we want to describe what IPFS is or what is required to be an IPFS implementation. Because like depending on how much you want to push it, right? Like if I say it's just content addressing, you could argue that like uTorrent is an IPFS node because like you can give it an info hash and then it'll download a thing. It's a hash linked data I, structure. I don't think that's a crazy statement. Like that's why I added the IPLD restriction after, but. So, so, that's I, what I'm, so maybe, maybe not, but like depending on how it is that we like, we should have an answer to that though, I think, right? I feel like that should be like a, it, it should be something that from like a, a brand or communicate like community unification perspective, we have like some stance on. Right. Um, is it like, it's like, not, it's not, is it not IPFS because it's using, it's just using like a, a SHA-1 and it's implied, but if like I put the magic, the magic incantation of like, you know, F, F01, you know, 63 in front. Yeah. You know, 63, I mean, 1114, then, then it becomes IPFS. Like is, does the magic incantation do it? There is some merit to CIDs as being the delineating boundary, I Might think. Yeah. I don't think that's yeah. unfair. I'm just, I'm saying like, there's a few places we can draw the lines here. Yeah. CIDs can, can also be seen as a subset of IPLD. Right. Yeah. I, I think I, I want to, I want to note one very interesting problem that I ran into yesterday when talking to Chime about Blurk. And that is that um, content addressing doesn't mean hashing bytes necessarily which it does currently in all models of IPLD and IPFS, at least in implementations and most specs as well. Can but I beep it? For example. The so inline, so inline hash doesn't actually well, require you to hash anything. Sorry. Well, but it, it still requires to you work through with bytes. But the important part is that in yeah, You copy the bytes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, but it's bytes. The point is the hash is defined over bytes. And Lurk hash oh, okay. is defined over field Sorry. elements which means you have the same hash for different bytes because you don't care about the underlying representation, you care about the content, which is to a certain extent actually much closer to content addressing, whereas what IPFS today actually does is byte addressing. 
um, which is, which I would hope that we can resolve this, this challenge at some point. Um, but I started thinking about it, it's actually really hard um, because you can't, you now have multiple inputs that lead to the same hash. You need I to believe, understand how to deal with that. I believe like we have many discussion about that. Um, the answer was basically like, it's too complicated. So we will still do byte, but we will find a way to always make the same bytes everywhere, except when we don't care about it. And like right. that's the point of but, trying but to that's have coherent but, serializers and everything. Yeah, but their applications and Lurk is one of them that runs into the problem of like, this is actually bad for them because they want different byte representations depending on the situations. Um, and they want to be addressed by the same hash. Because there's no point in rehashing things because they have to have very expensive hash function. Um, but I wanted to bring that up yeah. when we think about like, where do we draw the line in the sand? Is like, if we draw the line in the sand there, suddenly like all the content addressing in Lurk does goes is like not IPLE anymore or IPFS, which would be very unfortunate. Yeah, I think I agree to some extent, right? Like e even right content addressing, like you want to, you're, it's like at a high level address it by, by what it is. Um, a hash isn't necessarily, isn't really what it is. A hash is a, a summarized description of maybe what it is, right? Um, and so we're sort of like cheating a little bit there too. Um, I, I think that's reasonable. There's probably some, whether it's, it's names or, or, or documentation kinds of boundaries we'll have to draw between like the areas that are sort of open for us to like try and find out how we include all of these pieces and the areas that are like, you are, you are someone who wants to make an IPFS implementation or is utilizing IPFS implementations. Which of these things can you like realistically expect to be able to like plug into each other? Um, right. And so that, that's like, I think some, mm -hmm. some of these pieces will have to balance because I definitely want to be able to give room to grow and cover pieces that we don't currently cover without but also want to be able to have like people who are implementing new things, like understand what's actually there so that they can use it or understand where to go poking around and what's going to be like an, e what's an easy, what's an easy lift to like add a new piece and what's going to be like a hard lift to add a new mm -hmm. piece. Um, Uh, so if folks are interested in the, the IPLD and WebAssembly stuff, I, I tend to, whenever, when I have updates, I show them up in the, the, IPF, the IPLD call every couple of weeks. Um, if I can get this thing to move along, it might be really cool to have it in um, some IPFS implementations because then you don't have to rewrite all the codecs and ADLs in every language to be able to like represent stuff and move them along, um, which would make things pretty easy. Uh, or or much much easier than they are right now, where like you have to worry about the ecosystem lift time of like, yeah, you can make any codec you want, but then how long is it going to take for it to make it into all of the IPFS implementations? Because in reality, Go IPFS isn't the only one. And even if Go IPFS was the only one, people update at different rates. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, another one that maybe folks are interested in is uh some work we'll have coming up around speeding up data transfer. Uh, the, the basic pitch is like um, bit swap is handy because it's very easy to parallelize. You just sort of send out blocks to peers, but it's unfortunate because, you know, if you have a, if you have a deep graph, you have to like walk the graph with round trips. Um, and if you could have like, if you could grab, if you could have like an untrusted or not, yeah, an untrusted manifest of the blocks that were in the graph that you were looking for, um, you could sort of decide how much trust you're willing to give out uh, and basically accelerate your traversal through the graph. So I could have like a deep graph and actually like a, you know, a, a huge append only log and download it for multiple peers in parallel by growing my trust in the manifest over time um, by basically, you know, I download a block and then two blocks and four blocks 
eight blocks. Uh, and so like, I'm never, I'm never like taken advantage of by more than say like half of the data that I wanted. Um, but it allows me to do something that you couldn't do with, with BitSwap or graph sync, which is be able to like parallelize a download of a deep graph. Yeah, we've, I've done a bunch of research into this area. <clears throat> and I think if you use, if you just use the word gossip to describe the manifest, you're halfway home. Um, like it's, uh, we wrote a protocol for query called desync, which generates manifests of DAGs and does set intersection of between in a point to point sync. Um, future plans are eventually to parallelize it. Um, half the challenge we found was actually generating the manifest, super expensive, you have to touch all the blocks. So mm -hmm. <laughs> this is where like databases are a good thing and, and we don't have them in GoLand in a way that is fast. Uh, but uh, it'd be really interesting to see how that interplays with indexing work and, and how those two ideas maybe do or don't connect. But I'm all for research to areas of, that involve manifests that place the, albeit not so trustworthy knowledge as possible in the, in the fetching process. Did my action just die? Yeah, your connection Sorry. is a little, your connection is a little rough there, but Sorry. Yeah, I got what you're, I got what you're saying. Yeah. Um, Faster than node knows what it want, what it might want, even if it's a why, the whole conversation gets so much easier. And also just that you can deduplicate traffic requesting the code. Yeah. Here. Send it. I think that was a request. Um, never mind, my connection's garbage. <laughs> yeah. Zoom. Like, sorry. It seems like a seems like a sync protocol is not good enough. Um, seems like what? The synchronization protocol is not good enough. Maybe you're yeah. still using BitSwap. Uh, yeah. I mean, the the idea. So there's like a few things that sort of come out of this. One is like. Um, Sometimes like the manifest will be, you know, yeah, sometimes maybe the manifest is expensive to calculate, but sometimes you're sort of doing it anyway, right? Anyone who's serving graph sync requests sort of ends up doing something that looks a lot like calculating the request anyway, and this might be cheaper and you could, because selectors are, um, are reproducible, deterministic, you could like cache those results if you wanted to as well, yeah. um, which, which may, be, may be useful. Um, another thing which I would I'd like to see is like if this thing works out well, then somewhere else you can start pushing it is um, a proposal I, I had last year around uh, being able to download like large SHA-2 blocks in an incrementally verifiable way, because that thing looks an awful lot like downloading a large linear graph. And that would be very easy to cache manifests about because you'd be like, oh, I have a block that's super big. I should just pre-calculate the manifest and start. It's probably pretty small compared to the size of the block. Uh, and it's something people are gonna ask for a lot. So it's like a much, it's like sort of an, e in some ways an easier version of the problem from like a manifest caching and finding perspective. Is your idea for this protocol that it, it, does it do transfer as well? Would it just do manifest transfer? I think the easiest way at least to start it and then you could like add more stuff to like improve it later is to just have like a protocol that gets you the manifest yep and then and then use protocol, another transfer and then use transport like to transfer the rest. or whatever to do the data transfer yeah. um, i think this is the right thing because this way we can iterate over these things independently um, and you may find uses for both of them right so like for example if i was doing if I wanted to do some like UnixFS stuff and get things quickly, maybe I would get UnixFS. Maybe not a great example because the if the tree, trees are balanced, they're actually not so bad. But like maybe I'd want to use something like that looks lo like something like graph sync to ask for the first x bytes of the UnixFS file, and then use the manifesty approach and bit swap for the rest of it. That way, I'm ensured like I can I can really optimize my like time to first byte. <laughs> at the cost of maybe a little bit of extra download, but then I use my like more evenly spread out transfer for the rest of the large mm. file. I I would argue like it's not a good solution, 
if you really wanted like very, very good time to first buy, we would add like, you know how in the DAC PB node right now, if you have data, it's appended after the file. So like first you have all the links, then you have the data in the current block, I believe. And mm -hmm. if you swap this, so like you have the data first, then the links, you could just put the first like whatever 2K of data in the root file and then has the links, your time to first buy it will be literally the time to download the first block because you download the first block, you already have the first 2K of data and you can do that for all the routes. And so the, first, the time to first buy it is like always kind of good. So the first 2K is fetching one block, the next 2K is fetching one block plus one block because you already had to first the first 2K. And then like quickly it will reach the least block. I, I guess you wouldn't actually flip the, the data field. You will add a new field like pre-data or something like that for backward compatibility. But... Yeah, if you if you get to structure your data to optimize for that, which you can do, right? Like UnixFS allows you to do, this is part of it. Like UnixFS allows you to do like all sorts of crazy ways to organize the actual bytes instead yeah. of a file. That's why I think UnixFS is not very the best example. Even mm -hmm. assuming we don't want to break UnixFS, you could just add the first link that is an inline rub block, and then you you, could, we don't even. You could get pretty close in the sense that, like, you can do like a little bit of you can like combine a little bit of like the trickle dag approach and the balance dag approach to kind of get the first few bit, the first little bit easier, and the rest and the rest yeah. of it more balanced. Yeah. Um, I understand. But that's correctly. if you have control over the data structure. If I understand correctly, that's actually what Car V two is doing. Um, there's support for indexes, which we should absolutely, if you're talking about manifests, Adin, that, that work needs to be synced with the index work in Car V2. I'm pretty sure it's just like a generic, we support indexes, you can do whatever you want. Um, but uh, they do uh, header, payload blocks, indexes at the end, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I'm basing this off. Of yeah, that, that, sounds, that's, that sounds familiar, yes. And so that may, that may support Chirapos. Definition. Yeah. Um, that seems. Have a little bit. Of, sorry. Go ahead. I guess this assumes that you can read from the back efficiently somehow. Yeah, because I mean, in that which is not scenario, necessarily true, particularly in a car file, which is intended to be unbounded length. Um, I, I don't want like. I'll, I'll have to follow up with whoever designed Car V two. I. Still understand but, how putting the index at the end is a good thing. I, I would I I feel like the general thing that you'll run into or you may notice with, with Car V2 is that like as a way of there was a particular problem that was trying to be solved and they wanted to enable mm -hmm. like backwards compatibility with some of the Car V1 stuff as much as possible without like rewriting everything. Um, that mm -hmm. being said, having other like file formats for describing collections of blocks seems highly reasonable. Um, and there've been some that are I like, oh, let's car. encode things backwards. There are ones like, I wanna do, if I'm interested in like files and Unix FS, maybe I want one where like all the bytes, it looks like the file store in, in like in Go IPFS where like all the, all the bytes live here. And then the index that tells you the CID and which byte offsets they are lives over here so that I can leave alone. I can like put this thing like in S3 and let you read the byte offset range. And that's still the file, but like the index part for, if you wanted to do verifiable, like verifiably downloading the file, the index lives over here and you just sort of you can grab yep. you can grab one if you want it untrusted, and you grab them both if you want it if you want it verifiable, right? And if you just want to explore the data, you can just grab the index and look at it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's like a whole bunch of cool stuff there. I think also back to some of like the the reframe things and and some of the indexer work as well. Um, one of the nice things that we will have now is like a way to be able to create new types of provider records without a full network upgrade, which is like, oh, thank God, finally, right? Because the, the problem with like the, the, some of the, like the DHTs are very useful, but because they're these like organisms, they have to like, you have to figure out how they're going to like evolve 
right? Um, especially with people updating at different speeds and all of that. Uh, with the with the indexer system and with the fact that the reframe allows for like different types of records, um, we can start adding more. Like if we come up with good ideas for like new types of records that we sh that should be there, whether they're to support new protocol types or whether they're to support like advertising more data than just a block, like advertising some graph information, right? Those those all seem those are like much more now like with that, within the realm of possibility than they were beforehand because um, it's like faster to iterate on that, which I think will be like quite promising for us. Um, all right, we got a few minutes left. Anyone else have anything on their on their mind? There's a couple to do's called out in the course's conversation that I would highlight if others unless yeah. have questions. Um, so just things that jumped out to me while we were chatting. Uh, we're going to clean slate the IPFS specs repo. Mm -hmm. We're cool with that. Uh, what else was there? Uh, I think that we should make somebody should uh, I mean, whatever work you're doing on the index manifesting stuff, I'd love to hear about it. And I'd love to make sure that it syncs up with car v2 indexes so that we just don't, let's, let's, let's not make more index specs if we can avoid it, unless we have a good reason to. Um, so I'd love to sync up and make sure that that conversation is at least had. Um, and then there was another, something else that came out of here. Oh, and yeah, just the request to read. Everybody think of names for Go IPFS, unless we want to just go hard on banana. Um, and I guess yeah. my other my other question is just like uh, advancing work on the actual IPFS specs. Is that's happening async on GitHub? Like, how do people get involved in that? Uh, if you if you have a spec that you you either want to like clean slate and throw out the old one. <laughs> or 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 you have something else like just sub submit a PR. Uh, if you submit a PR for the UNIXFS spec before it is before we've moved everything into like an underscore archive folder, that's fine. Uh, whoever's in charge of doing the move everything into an underscore archive folder will have to do some rebasing to help you out. So, uh, so there is no one managing archive, okay. Not at the I mean, not at the moment. I, you know, if someone, wants to, if someone wants to volunteer to do that, that's also fine. Yeah. I don't feel bad if like there's stuff that's that's like that's missing because right now you have some specs there that are, um, some of them feel are sort of like feels bad specs. Uh, like the repo file system spec is a feels bad spec. Um, right. So like if <laughs> we can we can go ahead. We just call it that underscore f feels bad <laughs> underscore yeah. feels bad yeah um let's see uh yeah, and for bitsoft 1.2 i guess we seem to have agreement that we're just gonna wait we i'll comment on that that we're gonna leave things basically as they are and first implementer that comes around and has runs into problems please report back and we'll see if we want to make Didn't changes for the final one. What's what's with your PR, Medine? Is there a reason that it's not merged? The, mm, as long the, as it's the, more correct, what's there then? Oh, ugh. yeah. I uh, I got distracted. Gus made a bunch of good comments. I want to merge all of his comments and then Actually. do that. But yeah, okay. that's 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 on me. Sorry. No, no worries. I was just wondering if there's like something actually blocked. Or just like... No, I mean there are some. I, I guess worth calling out for the original bit swap spec. There is one thing that I did that was maybe a little bit controversial, uh, which is that in specifying some of the, in bits in specifying some of like like bit swap one dot two, one dot one. Like I removed some of the fields that are no longer necessary, despite the fact that like go bit swap will happily process them right it seems weird like given that i have given that we've moved around where the blocks are and that they're not all assumed to be dag pb anymore like do i still need to support the field that allows me to send dag pb blocks or like 
that's if you use BitSwap 1.0 and if you use 1.2, then like, you know, you don't need that anymore. Well, I guess maybe maybe we should have just have the protobuf for 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, just be three different protobufs. That, I mean, that's what I, that's effectively what I specified in, in the spec. I'm saying it doesn't match, it doesn't match, I think, any of the implementations. I think all the implementations just handle right. it uniformly. I think um, they just all use the same one big protobuf and just see what's in there. Which is which is fine. We can keep like the protobuf field, the protobuf numbers are free. We can keep like we can just make new ones and leave the old ones alone. Like we're gonna do it with we're doing for you know the Pergos folks. Um but yeah, I just wanted to call out that I, I made that change, which I guess seems natural, but I guess there was no spec there before specifying it, but if you had imagined the spec previously, it may not have looked like that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. If you'd imagined the spec before, sense. you might have copy pasted the protobuf, but like. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I think I, I think that's a great call. I think the spec should be more explicit than the implementations in this case, right? Okay. Cool. Um, oh, I have a general question on bits while, while we're at it. Maybe people won't know. I'm, right now, I'm trying to figure out how much value is there in supporting bits 1.0 and 1.1 in a new implementation. Like, excellent question. Does anybody know? Is there any value in supporting that? I. I probably would choose not to, and then see if people complain because it's not that much work to add. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's a good question. I think we have. I can see if I can pull up some dashboards that explain like protocol that that show like which protocols are advertised across the network. Um, I know I have I have some some other folks who there have been a bunch of folks who have written various DHT crawlers who can like show a bunch of that. My guess is that because of the SecIO breakage that yep. some of them, like the ancient ones that only support 1.0 is probably like- Are, are gone. Is. Yeah, that's, that'd be my that guess. Um, all right, daily protocols. Yeah, the bit swap 1, 1.0, 1 1.1 1 .1, and slash IPFS slash bit swap with no number all seem to have like basically this have the same number and bits off 1.2 is a little bit lower almost everybody has bits off 1.2 um so i have like this sample that i'm seeing here i've got like you know at some point today there were this crawl saw 50 K, like about you know 51k peers that spoke bit swaps norm like no no version through 1.1 and 49.6 that did 1.2. So if you did 1.2 right. only, you're losing like a tiny percent. Yeah. yeah. But that that's kind of my yeah, my guess there. Cool. But it's good. We should we should also like is you know call them we'll have to see how this goes because people use IPFS in a variety of ways and the networks aren't all attached or crawlable, right? Um, yeah. but if we can get out some like public metrics that show support of various of these protocols that also make it easier for implementers to figure out like, what do I even have to implement, <laughs> yep. right? Um, which I think, yeah, will help, help take some of the mystery out of making a new implementation, right? Yeah, right now it's like, well, what of the old stuff do I need to support? Like which one is actually still used? Which one is like, nobody cares, right? And like hard to understand. Yeah, let's put that as an action item. We should find, uh, see if we can get a place to make public. Um, and maybe we can just have a public list of like, these protocols are kind of like deprecated or like, mm -hmm. like it's fine you know, in, in implementations if they're not supported, like won't break badly. Um, maybe like yeah. have some process for that. Um, the probe lab folks have been putting out public stats every day. Um, so Giannis and others. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if they include protocol measurements. I if they're using, I think they're they're probably using the Nebula crawler, and Nebula I think has all that data. I don't know if it's being exposed, but 
I, that data I know exists. So it's just a matter of like, how can we make it Find discoverable it. to the right Look people? Yeah. 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 Jan is well, we'll probably happy to talk about this and then is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, not in the report, but uh, it should be easy to add. Yeah. Um, uh, the, one other spec thing, um, Lytle, I remember hearing that you were supposedly working on a gateway spec or yeah. supposed to eventually work on a gateway spec. And, any um, moment now. Any moment now. Yesterday, but not Yesterday. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just wondering, what's, what's this, like, what's your current state of that and like, yeah, so I got like a, a bunch of disjoint nodes and generally I just shut down everything for a day and, and compile it after 0.13 ships. Uh, right now, just trying to unblock that and so hopefully, and, and, and yeah, that would be just PR against specs repo, I think. Hopefully after we clean it up, clean slate, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, we also have, so there, there are a few things that I called out about in the 013 release that may be of interest. Uh, one is that it, it has hole punching. Um, the other the is- The new hole punching thing. Yeah, the other is like enabled by default, um, which yeah, and with like discovery for, for peers that will let you do relaying, will do relaying for you to help you with the hole punching. There were a few gateway API changes um, that are there. No, some notable ones include, I can ask for a car file without any API v0 nonsense, which surely nobody making a new gateway implementation will want any of the API v0 stuff if they can avoid it. What, what is even API v0? Do you know what, I, or is, the, is it a serious question or not a serious question? I, I actually don't know, no. Oh, if I go to like, see uh, share my screen I can do things like uh, um, oh this one oh now I remember oh yes yes oh now you've typed it yes now, <laughs> now I do remember uh-huh yes. right I can uh, yep. arg equals yep. you know ipfs slash ipns slash ipfs.io yep 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 the trauma has been three times. Right, right, like this. This is yes. not something a gateway probably Please no. support. Please no. Nope. Right? No. Okay. Nope. Cool. We're not going to support that. Um, nope. Sorry. So, so some of the, there are some pieces of API v0 that are useful that are not usable from gateways yet. Some examples include, before this release, there's getting out car files is one or individual blocks. Um, Another one is like exporting UnixFS directories. Uh, you can get individual files, but you can't like get a directory out. But mm -hmm. you could use like API v0 get, and then it would grab the whole directory and like package it up in a tar file and give it to you. Um, so there's like a few of these things that we probably want to add into the gateway spec to make things happy for people. But we want to make API v0 not required for anyone else who wants to make a gateway. Um, yeah, and maybe even have like, if, if there's enough functionality for anything popular, have like, here's the Nginx rewrite that will let you like rewrite anyone who's using the old thing to like translate it into the new thing for you. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, until next time, uh, if you have comments around uh, how this meeting could run better for you. Uh, drop them either in the bottom of this one or in the meeting notes that will be open for the next one, which will be happening shortly. Awesome. Have a weekend. Thanks, also, everybody.